Yes, 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 yes. It's PDEs again. I'm excited. We are going to talk about PDEs. Uh, we, in our first video, we talked about uh, definition of PDE. We talked about uh, how to classify PDEs. We talked about very many things. Then we talked about also how to not PDEs. We talked about the steps of the last PDEs. But today, we're going to talk about specifically how to solve a PDE. Before beginning our video, I want to encourage all my viewers, please subscribe to my channel. The channel name is called Repost Lectures. The channel link is written, is just below in my, uh, just below there. If you want to just click the link and then subscribe. Please share my videos. Uh, and please click the like button and the notification bell so that you don't miss any videos on Repost Lectures. So today, we're going to talk about how to solve a PDE. So, how to solve a PDE, let's talk about it very much. So, if you into uh, bracket x1, x2, x3, up to xn, the solution to a PDE, then it must satisfy the PDE. So if this u is the solution to a PDE, then it must satisfy that PDE. So this is the first step we're going to be doing. If you are solving a PDE like this one here, this, this heat equation, we are going to let u to be equals to some value. So, But if that u, eh, it is a solution, it must satisfy the, what? the PDE. But what you must know before we begin, a PDE has very many solutions, has various solutions, as I've been here. PDEs have various solutions. They have many solutions. Since they have various solutions, but what I want to tell you, the question or the note is that not all the solutions to PDE are, 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 are solutions to PDE. Not all of them. So a solution that the PDE must satisfy both the boundary conditions and the initial conditions. If the solution satisfies the boundary conditions, and initial conditions, then it's a solution. Though you're going to get very many solutions, maybe like three of them or four of them or all many of them, but not all of them are the solution to PDE. So how do you solve a PDE? There are two methods to solve a PDE. Number one, we use the product method and the separation of variables method. Only two methods. Either the product method or the separation of variables method. There are two methods to solve a PDE. So, in, our, in this video, I'm going to talk about how to solve a 1D heat equation. So, there are about three cases we are going to consider. Case 1, when, uh, when the constant is, is greater than 0, when the constant is equal to 0, when the constant is less than 0. In this first video, I'm going to talk about on one, on one case, and then maybe in the next video, we shall talk about other cases. Please follow the videos until the end. So the first, the first question I want to do is that solve the one-dimensional heat equation below. So why is one-dimensional? Because it has, it has only two things, two independent variables. It, it is in terms of x and what? Time. And x we said is what? x is space or distance, then t is time. So it's in terms of x and what? Time. So since in terms of only x and time, then it's one dimension. How do you know? You see from here. When it's two dimensionals, it's in terms of x, y, and time. This is what we call what? A two-dimensional heat equation. Two dimensions in terms of x, y, and time. Now when it's one dimension, just x alone. It's only one x, which is space. Then what? Time. So, let's follow. Now, they've given us the boundary conditions. When uh, x is zero, the temperature is what? Zero. And when x is L, the temperature is what? Zero also. So let's first start trying to sketch this boundary condition from here. The sketch is like this. Uh, this is like our 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 shaft, which is of which heat is flowing into it. So let me assume the shaft is of length L. So the boundary condition means when at this point when x is what zero. Hmm? That means you have u x t from here from the equation. So when x is zero, put here what zero here where there's x. So to be u into zero of t. So, so here is now when x is what? L. Eh? When x is what? L. So that means u x of t, which I'm going to substitute here, is equal to u into x. Our x is what? L for this time. L of what? T. You get it. So this is what we call the boundary what? Conditions. They are given before we, uh, before we, what? we solve the, the PDE. This is the first, this is one, of the, one of the steps I'm going to consider. So how do you solve this? Uh, dear students, please follow very well. So the first step, you're going to use uh, you're going to use the product method. You're going to let, as you say, the uh, if u x one x two x three and up x n the solution, let must satisfy. So I'm also going to let this thing given here, this thing given here. Are you seeing this? U, this is space, this is what time. You're going to let. That's the first step. Product method. Using the product method, let u 
you do x or what t to be equals to x you make it what capital x uh, and then t we make it what capital t you get so if it was uh, x y t you would say x y and t that's how simple they are if not solve a one dimensional you can solve what a two dimensional you can solve anything so if it was uh, assume it was x y and t it will be x y and t I see that. So this is a solution, a PDD. So of which you can, this is in terms of x, you can put here small x, or you can put here what? Small t. But since it's the same, you can not put it just not to confuse. So after this, you can call this maybe equation, equation 1. Then number 2. So now we are going to substitute this one here inside here. Eh? So to substitute this, one, this equation 1 inside this equation, we call this one equation what? A. To solve this, to substitute one equation, equation A, we have to differentiate this equation twice. Rest with what? To x. Now we say that partial derivative, that means t is what? Constant. So I'm going to say this. Eh? They are squared ux of what? t over their x squared. It means you are differentiating this function with respect to x squared twice. But t is what? Constant. That means you will have x twice, then what? t. Constant point two. Are we getting? I put these two doubles because we are differentiating twice. Hmm? What about the side? By the way, u relative to t, by this setting this function relative to t once, meaning that means x is what? Constant. That's partial derivative. So we're going to have the partial of u x t respect what to t. Meaning we are differentiating this function here with respect to t, but x is what? Constant. We shall have del. The answer will be, maybe let's go direct. Oh, it's only once. So it will be. Rest of the t, it will be, you said that t will not be prime, t will not be prime, it will be, this is now a constant, t prime. Are you getting me very well? So that's what you do. If it's respect to t, that means x is constant. Rest to x, t is constant. So after getting this, we substitute this equation 3 and equation 2 in equation a. And we solve it. So let's substitute, substitute equation 2 and 3 in equation a. I see that. Let's substitute and see. This is how we solve the PDE. So let's substitute equation here and we see. So we are going to put this inside here. So we shall have what? We shall have uh, equation 2 here. It will be x double prime of t. Now this t was constant here. When you know x, that means t is what? Constant. Twice, that means we have two, two doubles, two double that the derivative. Same as 1 over this symbol. This symbol is a constant test. You can leave it there. Uh, then now this one we're differentiating what? As I say, you said del u or del t. It means we're differentiating what? This function which is here, rest to t once, keeping one x constant. So now x is constant, that's why we got this. So we substitute one here, we shall have x and t prime. I'll get it very well. So next we are going to separate variables. Mm -hmm. So by separation of variables, we call the project maybe project 4. By by, by separation of variables, by separation of variables. So we can divide this equation 4 by, by this, just to separate variables by equation 1. We are going to say divide equation 4 huh? by, by 1. Okay, in fact, we are dividing by what? X, T. So we divide this one by what? xt, just to separate what? Variables. So when you divide what happens? When you divide here, you find that t will go. Right? So that means we shall remain in what? x that over that. The same as 1 over this symbol. Now if you divide here, that means this time x will what? Will go. Right? We will remain with t alone. So it will be what? t prime over t. Now since we have separated variables, now this x now prime over x which is equal to this, we are going to assume it's equal to what? Some constant, maybe, let us assume P. Now P is like some other constant about introduced. Some other what? Constant. Because the thing is like, uh, this, this is X alone. We are separate the variable, this is T alone. This is just a constant, same as another constant P. Now, now when, when, when now I equate, now that means either this, either this is equal to this, or this is equal to, that we shall form two equations. So I'm going to say either this equals this. Now when this one is equal to this, we shall have x double prime over x 
the same as P, implying that when a cost multiplier we shall have x double prime the same as Px, therefore we shall have x double prime minus Px the same as 0. Alright, we are going to make the equation now, this equation 4 and equal equation 5. Also, this is equal to what? That. So we shall have uh, 1 over that symbol t prime over t same as p. Are you following very well? Please follow because the things are not very hard, they're just very simple. So we are here, we are analyzing a one dimensional heat equation. We are solving it using the product method. So we are going to do this. When it's by the variable, we shall have this and implies that when you cross multiply this over 1, when you cross multiply, we shall have t prime uh, is equal to uh, is equal to p this symbol squared then t mm. as simple as that so we can solve these two equations let me start writing this therefore t prime minus p squared same as zero so if you see very well equation five and equation six are the ODEs so how do you solve ODEs you can solve ODEs very fast um, Let's solve all these from the math 2. From the general math 2. So from equation 5, we are going to solve these two bodies. Solve equation 5 and 6. And you're done. As simple as that. If I think just let u equals x over xt, then you, you differentiate this with x, keeping t constant substitute there, and then you follow. So solving equation, we are solving now these two equations. Equation 5 and equation 6. So we shall solve from 5. We say x double prime minus px same as zero. So how do you solve all these when map two? You get what you call the characteristic what equation. So what is our characteristic equation? Mm -hmm. This we change to r squared minus minus. Uh, okay, now now we are, we are doing uh, a case. Let us do a case. But actually, I choose a case first of all. Plus first of all, we are saying a PDR has what many solutions. It has various solutions. So the solutions there are done all the solution of PDEs. Only one solution is what? The solution. How do you know? It must satisfy the boundary what? Conditions. So now let us do this. Let's take case one. Case one. When P is greater than what? Zero. That means when that constant P is, let me say is greater than what is positive. Right? When the constant is what? Positive. Uh huh. What do you do? Then let p is equal to lambda squared. Mm -hmm. Just when it's what positive. So let's substitute here and see. We shall have uh, from from equation. Now we're going to solve from equation from five. We shall have x double prime minus p x the same as zero. We shall have x double prime minus. Now our p is what this. It's going to be lambda squared x the same as zero. So how do you solve PDEs? We said now these are these are ODEs now. How do you solve them? Use what? Math 2 concept, which is what? The Cartes equation. I'm going to say the Cartes equation, we shall have the R what? squared. Eh? Minus lambda squared the same as zero. Mm? So what do you have? When I rent this, what's R? R is same as lambda squared. Let the square root because just taking that side. So what's R? R is positive lambda or negative lambda plus whatever number either positive or negative so after that we are going to just write the general equation how do you write it we say that that's not a particular equation eh? it's going to be our y it's going to be equals to in fact let me just write it simply like this is going to be uh, some constant maybe a e to power r1 rx plus b this math 2 this is just math 2 plus b e to power r2 x so let me assume from here my r1 is lambda then my r2 is negative lambda so let's substitute and see that means our y equals to a e to power lambda x plus b e to power negative lambda x this is very important hmm? i see that so this one you have solved what we have solved this equation five we have got what we have got this so also we are going to solve another equation, equation 6, you get, also solve equation 6, then you combine them and then you form the solution. So this is one of the solutions we have solved here. Then uh, let us go this side, we solve. Uh, so we solve this, this 
was our initial condition it was u into x zero is equal to f of what x yeah so let's solve this equation now we're going to solve that equation what six so hope you understood how to solve the equation now how to solve the equation number five let's go solve the equation six now from six now it's a continuation from equation six we say what our t prime minus p sigma squared t sigma zero so how to solve this we said we get what the cardiac equation now since one is prime that is going to be r alone then eh? our cardiac what equation is going to be r minus now this p our constant p we say is what positive eh? that's case one that's going to be lambda squared sorry it's going to be lambda squared squared t no r no, t is not there is equal to zero so arrange what's r r one is going to be lambda squared that so after, after getting this we now substitute we now do this and substitute what in our what we work with a particular point of this case then call it maybe y1 so what is our y2 y2 is going to be this one one r r1 is going to be now this constant a b we can use another constant maybe c you can say c e to power uh maybe r1 now this was this is the t this was in, in terms of t so i can call it r1 t there in terms of x, I call it R1, x. So we're going to have what? C, e to power, lambda squared, sigma squared, t. Now this is our what? Our solution. Because we have only what? One, one R. If there are two, I'll write in this form. So after this, we get now the, 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 the solution. Yp is going to be y1 plus y2. So what's our, y, our, our, our yp? Our yp was this. Our yp was our solution we are getting. Yeah? Our ux is t. Therefore, our solution in the first case in x1 t is going to be equal to. We are going to combine this what these two solutions. We combine solution one and solution one two. So if you combine them, what you have? We have what the first one here. We shall have a e lambda x plus b e negative lambda x. Then times what this c here c e lambda squared sigma squared t so this is our solution for the first case we are going to invoke the boundary condition and initial conditions in the next video please don't forget to subscribe to my channel don't forget to like my videos don't forget to share my videos and don't miss out for a second case this was the first case of solving what a pde so we're going to do another case case two we're going to do when p is equal to what zero then the last case is going to be when p is less than what zero or negative so please attend all the all the videos so that you don't miss out of any any case. See you next time.